Hi, this is a short paraphrase of the movie Overboard. Subscribe to the channel and give me a like. I try to make new videos almost every day. Enjoy watching. Dean is a pro and skilled carpenter who has been hired to work on a big boat. He needs to rebuild a walk-in closet. Extremely unpleasant is their dousing of the rich girl Joanna, whose exit is causing the entire crew to suffer. With every word and action she lets the workman know how disgusted she is by him. Joanna flaunts an extremely revealing swimsuit in front of him, so Dean immediately notices the birthmark on her butt. Her husband Grand is busy doing all sorts of crap, shooting skeet with a shotgun, or shooting a bow with suction cup arrows. After 48 hours, which required Dean Zumpf, patience, miracle, the mechanism cabinet was ready. But the lady still wasn't satisfied. She wanted shelves made of cedar, and this Neanderthal dared to make oak shelves, although the material was not even discussed. After the argument, the woman refuses to pay for the work and throws the carpenter out of the yacht. Finally he tells her everything that he has been boiling over for two days, and this pleases all the workers on the yacht. But the mean woman pushes Dean overboard and commands the captain. Full steam ahead. Not only does the carpenter not get his $600 for the job, he also loses all his tools. The man complains about life to his friend Billy, and Joanna complains about the carpenter to her mother, who lives in some unreal pretentious mansion. Dean is a single dad raising four kids, and they almost rock the principal who came to congratulate them on their first day at their new school. The family had recently moved in. At night, the drunk lady remembered that she had forgotten her engagement ring on the deck, so she went for it. On her heels she loses her balance and flies overboard. The husband hears a cry for help, but just turns the TV up. The next day the local news tells us that an unknown woman was picked up in the water by a parsing garbage truck, and that she suffers from amnesia. Rich sees an interview with his wife. She may have lost her memory, but she was still just as nasty. During the lineup, Joanna made a scene all over the hospital, and Rich decided he'd be better off without her. But when the woman on TV was seen by the carpenter, he was very much rejoiced at the news. He goes to the hospital and declares that the lady he found is his wife Ani. The only personal belongings she had on her were her panties. But the woman refuses to admit that the bumpkin is her husband. He makes up details about their past together, but Joanna demands proof. And then Dean tells her about the Milan harass that some creep wouldn't have known about. And the cops are happy to finally get rid of the problematic patient. Ani is shocked to find herself living in a shack in the middle of rusty troughs. The inner floor is sloped and creaky. There are scattered things and junk everywhere. It was time to meet the kids. The boys have already been worked over by their father, so they unanimously call a stranger a mother. To their beloved mommy, they find her a dress that would rather fit a chubby shirty. Greek and Charlie are twins who look nothing like each other. Chubby's name is Travis, and Joey, the smallest outlaw, is immediately unaware that her mother has passed away from alcoholism and her father hopes for early release. After such revelations, Dean sends his wife into the kitchen. She has no idea what to do with the chicken stew and vegetables, and for the first time in her life, light the stove. The inept woman is immediately burned, thankfully there were fire extinguishers handy. In the evening Dean is going out for a beer with friends and bowling balls, and he'll be back whenever he wants. The man brags to his friend about how he's re-educating a rich girl and pouring his cheap booze on his clothes. He sets out to shock his guest and, pretending to be drunk, climbs into bed with her. And if they do not want to share a bed with her husband, then sleep and this hard couch with dogs scared of lightning and gave her a fun night out. In addition, the roof leaks and you have to sleep directly with buckets in their hands. The kids have to be escorted to school early in the morning and wonder mom is making them a snack as best she can. Dean is also off to work. It's time to clean the house, and of course the lady has zero skills in this area. After everything that has happened to her during the day, Ani has been sitting motionless for an hour and hardly blinks. The boys ask their father to trade her for a new one, and Dean brings his wife to her senses by dinking her in a barrel of water. Later, the woman rummages through the house looking for photos and family heirlooms that might bring back her memory. But still no luck. Turns out they were lost in the move. Suddenly, for a moment, she remembers the closet the carpenter made for her. At night, Dean turns to Billy to do business with him. The family pictures he used. Joanna's pictures were taken when the garbage men fished her out, so she's all over the place. Turns out the sullen woman made sure she belonged in that hellhole. Dean has Billy come over to watch soccer, 
and he is poking fun at his housekeeper again. The boys put glue on the plates, and those are glued to Annie's hands intentionally. In addition, small splatters in her ketchup. The woman freaks out, but realizes she can get back at them and hoses the whole bunch down with water. At school, the boys refuse to take the tests to assess their mental potential, and the principal calls both parents to the school. The children allegedly fake being sick, but Annie sees that they really do have a rash all over their bodies and pounces on the teacher. This is what she does best. That same evening, it turns out that Joey can't read and is very embarrassed about it. Ani reprimands Dean for going out while their children are sick. When he returns late at night, he glances around the kitchen and assesses how much cleaner the house has become. The man wants to apologize to Ani, but cries because she's also covered in a rash. He takes pity and takes his pseudo-spouse, but a comfortable bed. During a family vacation in the countryside, Dean and Bill discuss the idea of building a miniature golf course, and Ani suddenly speaks French to herself. She also recalls various wonders of the world, which becomes the basis of the miniature golf course project. Another evening he takes off again to go bowling. Except he forgot the ball at home and doesn't go to get it so he can give it to his husband. But he's not at the local drinking establishment. Turns out he unloads bags of fertilizer every night. Dean and Billy present a miniature golf project to investors, which is supposed to be a local attraction. They manage to convince them to give them the money for it. Construction work begins, and Dean begins to feel guilty about cheating on a woman. Joey is already reading a little bit, and the other guys are no longer mindlessly whizzing around, but are busy doing quieter things. When he gets home, Dean starts talking about how he's embarrassed because he's hiding something from Ani. She, on the other hand, thinks he's referring to his nocturnal escapades. However, the man wants to tell her the whole truth, but he hesitates and lies about it being his wife's birthday. They have a lot of fun at the bar, and it's not Annie who is thrilled with the taste of the $8 champagne. Even though she just recently turned her nose up at caviar, Dean tells Annie the romantic legend, in which everyone died for love, and kisses her on the lips. Then they finally have their first wedding night. Meanwhile, Grant is having a blast with the three girls, but unfortunately, he still has to go back to town to get his wife, as John's mother threatens to have thugs set on him unless he calls her daughter on the phone again. Ani finds her panties with her initials in Dean's truck and gives him a scandal. The man thinks it's a great excuse to finally tell the truth and you water down that these are hers and she's not his wife. He asks for confirmation of his words and the boys. Note is already used to the new mom and sticking to the old version. It doesn't help and Bobby, who admits it's his panties. So what, she remains in the dark for now. Finally, there is the grand opening of the miniature golf course in town. During the performance, Dean thanks his wife for her help and confesses his love for her. Near the house, the family had a limousine waiting for them, from which Joanna's real husband stepped out. And when the woman saw him, memory finally came back to her. She was very happy about that, and also that she actually had a lot of money. But then she also began to wonder, what was she forgetting in this neck of the woods why did Dean do this to her she's not anymore, nor is Annie his wife, and these boys are not their mother. The woman went into the house to get her things, but realized there was nothing there for her. The boys chased after the limo and their other mother, but Grant chased them away. Jonu is finally back on her expensive yacht, but she is weaned on the party life and prefers champagne to beer. She offers her mother delicacies, which bewilders everyone, because there are servants for that. Well, the real shock was experienced by the rich people when she opened her own beer at home. At home, everything at Dean's house falls apart, and the boys are determined to get their mother back. But their father does not share their illusions. While mom is asleep and her husband reminisces about the girls, Joanna hangs out with the staff and teaches them how to drink tequila. Their company is much more pleasant to hear, and she now realizes how horrible she's been to ordinary people. The woman decides to take life into her own hands and turns the boat around herself. But the husband changes course again the next morning. That same morning, the man decides to catch up with and bring Joanna back. He and the boys are helped by Billy and his friends on a military boat. During the showdown, Grand let it slip that he's in the hospital and, no longer holding back, also confesses that he's been having fun with promiscuous girls all this time. The woman abruptly stops the boat, and then sees a boat with her man and children. They are about to catch up with her, but the Coast Guard gets a report of poachers and they have to turn around. But that doesn't stop Dean and he jumps into the water. 
Joanna follows suit and swims toward her beloved carpenter, just as the lover did in the legend he told earlier. True, it ended there with the heroes heating up, but that's not about our couple, as they are wearing life jackets and lifeguards in a lifeboat nearby. Joan admits that she's not even impoverished, as these are her riches. They husband and the boys immediately start making a list of everything they would like to have. Thanks so much for watching this video to the end. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like watching movie retellings, because I make new videos every day. Bye.